Hello, fellow travelers. I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time, slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. Are you old enough to remember traveler's checks? Don't leave home without them. That's what Carl Malden would say. If you don't remember them, consider yourself lucky. Fortunately, they're no longer a thing. But what forms of money should you be using when you travel abroad these days? And how do you manage those forms of money? And furthermore, how do you know what the value of your money is when you're in another country? So that's what we're going to talk about today, managing your money when you're traveling abroad. So let's get started. Let's start by talking about the various ways that you can pay for things. And we'll start with the very simplest one, and that's cash. Cash is pretty much going to be accepted anywhere you go. Very unusual to find a place that won't accept cash. But with all the different ways of paying for things these days, it's made cash a lot less necessary. But there are instances where having a little bit of cash on hand is definitely a good thing. That's in situations like if you're going to go to a mom and pop store, maybe a street food cart, or if you're going to be venturing out away from the city into the countryside, more likely you're going to have to pay for things with cash. So it's good to have a little bit of cash on hand. For me personally, the way that I get cash when I arrive in a new country is I go to an ATM and use my debit card to withdraw money from that ATM. There are some fees associated with doing that, but I'm gonna tell you in a moment about a way to get around those fees. Another way to get cash is to go to a money exchange place. There are money exchange places throughout different cities that you may visit, and you can exchange the money that you have into the currency of the place that you're now at. But there are gonna be some fees with that, more fees than what you would have with withdrawing from an ATM. So bear that in mind. And also, if you're gonna use a money exchange place, do not use the one that's at the airport. They have the absolute worst fees and conversion rates. So best not to use the airport one. It's the most convenient and you pay for it because it's so convenient. Better to use the ones that are in town or better yet, do as I do and just use an ATM and withdraw money from an ATM. Now I mentioned that there are fees associated with using an ATM, but there is a way around that. And that's if you have a Charles Schwab account. If you have that account and you're pulling money from your Charles Schwab account, the fees will be reimbursed at the end of the month for all of the different withdrawals that you've done and all the transactions that you've done. So you get that money back. So that's one way of reducing your fees down to zero. And when you're using an ATM, use one that's physically attached to the bank rather than a random one that you may see on the street someplace. The reason for that is that you're less likely to have problems from skimming, which is when people put a device onto the ATM in order to get the information off of your card when you put it inside the reader. You're less likely to see that at a bank. Also, if something happens while you're making your transaction in the ATM, say that the card doesn't come back out, then you can just go right inside of the bank and tell them about it and they can get your card back for you. If you're someplace on the street with some random ATM, where are you gonna ask for help getting your card back in that situation? So it's a good idea to always use ATMs that are physically located with a bank, in a bank. And here's a mistake I've made with respect to ATMs that you can learn from me to not repeat. And that is, do not use what's called a Euronet ATM. You see them in various places around the world. They have a distinctive blue and yellow color to them. For some reason, they charge you the most ridiculous transaction fees. I don't know why that is, but I learned it the hard way by using them. They were in a convenient location, it was even next to a bank, but nevertheless, they, they charge ridiculous fees. So if you're gonna use an ATM, Stay clear of Euronet. They're blue and yellow, very distinctive colored. You'll see them out there. Do not use the Euronet ATM. 
And while you can use a debit card for purchasing things, I'd recommend not using them for that purpose. I only use my debit cards for withdrawing cash from an ATM. The second way that you can pay for things is using a credit card. And that's the way I prefer to make most of my purchases. Fortunately, credit cards are fairly well accepted throughout most of the world. There are some places where they aren't gonna be accepted, but for the most part, you're gonna be able to use that card and to just tap it to pay for anything that you'd want. There are some places I have been where they will charge you a fee to use the credit card, maybe like a 3% fee. That's happened at a few places. Um, in Lao, that happened a few times, and it's happened in a few other countries as well. So something to keep in mind as well that to have the privilege to be able to use a credit card, sometimes they will charge an extra fee. So if you don't want to have to use that fee then, or want to be charged that fee, then you want to make sure you have some cash on hand to pay for whatever it is that you're going to be buying. If you're going to use a credit card, make sure it's one that is free from foreign transaction fees. Most major credit cards these days are like that, but just verify that your credit card is not going to charge you any foreign transaction fees because those will rack up after a time of making purchases while you're traveling abroad. And also have a credit card that's going to give you something back some kind of a benefit, whether it's a cash back card or points that can be used for a hotel or miles that could be used for a, an airline, um, air, airline card that you might have, or just points of some sort that can be used for a variety of different things. I personally make most of my credit card purchases using a Chase Sapphire preferred card. And that card allows me to use points that I accrue from purchases I make to use them for flights and for hotels, for rental cars. So it's a very, a very good uh, card to have. Another thing I wanna say about using credit cards is that you wanna make sure you're paying off your balance at the end of each statement period. You don't wanna carry over balance because the interest rates for credit cards are very, very high. So if you find that you're not able to pay off your credit card at the end of each month and you're starting to carry a balance, then you may want to look at a different way to pay for things. Now, sometimes when you make a credit card purchase, and also sometimes when you make a, a withdrawal of cash from an ATM using a debit card, you'll get an option of whether to choose the local currency or the currency of the country you're from. If you have that option, always choose the local currency. If you don't, then you're gonna to have to pay a fee for conversion of that money into your currency. So to prevent from having that fee charged to you, always select the local currency. In the past, it was a good idea to let your bank or your credit card company know that you were gonna be traveling outside the country so they wouldn't get suspicious from any purchases that you're making in some other country. But these days, it's not really necessary to do that anymore. However, you do want to keep an eye on your statement, go online occasionally, look at the charges that are being made on your card to make sure there aren't any fraudulent charges on there. Because if you do see something, you want to make sure that you contact your credit card company and let them know so that you can get that fraudulent charge taken off your card. Now, speaking about fraudulent charges on your credit card, in the event that that happens, the credit card company will then close your account. And once they do that, you're no longer able to use that card. So it's a great idea to have backup cards just in case that happens. So my personal strategy is I have three credit cards and I have three debit cards as backups. So I have a credit card and a debit card that I keep in my wallet, which I'm going to be wearing on me most of the time. I have a credit card and a debit card that I keep in a pouch inside my backpack. And I also have a credit card and a debit card that I keep inside a secure location inside my luggage. So in the event that any of those things get lost or stolen, my wallet, my backpack, or my luggage, if they get lost or stolen, 
one of them gets lost or stolen. Then I have backups with the other two places that I've kept credit card and a debit card. A third way to pay for things is to use a digital wallet like Apple Pay or Google Pay. These are becoming more accepted around the world, but they're not widely accepted yet. So you may be able to use them in some situations in some countries, but don't expect that you're always going to be able to use those. So it's good to have a backup, whether it's credit cards or cash, in the event that you're not able to use the digital wallet for making your purchases. Another thing that you're going to need to know is how much your money is worth in the country you're visiting. So what I do is I use a, an app called XE, or you can go to the website xe.com, and XE will give you the conversion rate between any two currencies in the world. So you can see how much of your currency you're, that you're used to in your head thinking about, how it compares to what it is in this new country. And that's an important thing to know when you're going to an ATM to withdraw some money so that you don't accidentally take out too much or too little because you don't know what the conversion rate is. And it can be a little unnerving when you go to an ATM in Vietnam, for instance, and you see the choices on the screen are 1 million, 2 million, or 3 million. And you think, ah, I don't want that much. But then when you go to the app and you look at how it compares conversion-wise between the US dollar and the Vietnamese currency, the dong, you'll see that there are 25,000 Vietnamese dong per one US dollar. So if you are withdrawing 1 million Vietnamese dong, you're really only drawing the equivalent of 40 US dollars. So it's not much at all. So it's important to know how those conversions are between your currency that you're used to and the currency of the country that you're in. So if you withdrew some money from an ATM, you may find at the time when you're going to be leaving the country that you haven't spent it all. You have some leftover cash. So what do you do with that? Well, one thing you can do, if it's just a really small amount, you may just want to save it as a souvenir. Or if it's a larger amount, maybe you want to convert it into the currency of the next place you're going to be going to. But bear in mind, if you do that, you're going to be paying those conversion fees and you're not going to get the full value of the money that you had because of the conversion and the fees that are going to be associated with that. Another thing you can do is just buy some food. Maybe you need to eat lunch before going on your flight or just buy some snacks to take on the flight or something like that. Just make sure it's something you actually need. If you don't just unnecessarily buy things just to get rid of the money, but Try to find things that you can actually use or that you can enjoy, like a meal or something like that. Also, there are sometimes opportunities to give money, to donate money to different charities that may have a, a barrel or a, a container or something like that where you can put your spare change into that. So that's another thing that you can look for. See if you can find places where you can give a little bit of your money leftover money, and donate it to some organization there locally in the place that you're at. Another way that I've heard people take care of their leftover money is by going, say, to a Starbucks and buying a gift card. Now, I've heard people talk about this, but I've never really known anybody who actually did it, whether it really works or not, to buy a gift card in the currency that, of the country that you're in, and then take that to a different country, which is in a different currency, and then using it there. So I'm not so sure it works. People say that it's a way to do this, but I don't know, have you actually done this before? If you have and been successful with it, or if you have tried it and not were, were not successful, then leave a comment below and let us know about that, because I'm very curious to know whether this really does work or not. It may work between certain countries, I guess, but it may not work between all countries. So very curious about that. So if you have any input on that, uh, please leave a comment below. So those are my tips for managing money when you're traveling abroad. If you have some tips of your own, please share those down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.
Until next time, let's get out there and travel.